Hello everybody and welcome to another Disney Q&A. This is the series which you guys send me all sorts of questions regarding everything Disney, the history, the parks, the movies, you name it. And I try to give you the answers to the best of my abilities. We're here at the Animal Kingdom on MC Magic. Uh, I've got a very small Q&A crew with me because I'm filming pretty late at night. Uh, but let's walk around the parks a bit and answer some questions. We've got some really good ones and we're going to actually kick it off with a really good one. Uh, Andrew S. asks, uh, I remember hearing a rumor that Disney didn't originally own the Swan and Dolphin, and I just wanted to hear if you knew anything about that. Also, how do you feel about the Disney College program? So, let's um, answer that first part first, because it's a very interesting piece of Disney history. So, uh, Disney doesn't own the Swan and Dolphin. That is actually owned by, I believe Tishman is the name of the company. And so the history behind the Swan and Dolphin is essentially when Michael Eisner and Frank Wells uh, took the reins of the Disney company in the mid to late eighties, uh, part of what they wanted to do was expand on the, uh, the parks. They wanted to expand Disney World. They saw a great asset there, but they also saw a lot of hotels around the property taking advantage of all these people needing somewhere to stay when they were vacationing. So they wanted to add more hotels. The original plan was that they were going to hire Marriott to um, to manage a whole string of hotels. I think it was like something like 20 they had planned. And Tishman would be this company that would be involved in building them. So these plans were developed for a while. And eventually Disney had had decided and convinced themselves that it would be more beneficial for them to do it on their own. So they wanted to just cancel the deal and just cut it there. However, uh, this was a clear breach in contract because the contract said otherwise. So part of the legal settlement that they had built was based around this idea that they would allow Tishman to still build and own two hotels. And they ended up being the Swan and the Dolphin. And they were in premium space outside of Epcot, which is a new project at the time and uh, they would continue to own it so they own it however they still lease the land from disney and they have a 99 year lease so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens i guess in in uh 2080 whatever year that ends up being uh Disney also receives a share of the profits from running the hotel, and Disney actually still retains rights of the design of the hotel, both on the exterior and the interior. Now, that was actually an interesting move by Eisner, because what had happened was when they made this deal, they gave up, they forfeited, I guess you could say, the budgetary rights of the hotel to Tishman which on Tishman's side, they thought, great, we get to decide how much this is going to cost. And that way we don't spend too much on this. If it's a bummer, we, we don't have to spend too much. However, what Disney retained and what Eisner wanted to retain was the design rights of the way the hotel looked. Well, I don't know how the lawyers at Tishman didn't see this, but having those rights essentially means you also have the rights to the budget because if you're going to decide to build a giant set of swans on top of the hotel, you don't really get to decide how much you spend on that hotel because you have to build those giant set of swans. Um, so really, at the end, Eisner almost had complete control of these hotels. He determined how they looked on the outside, on the inside. You know, uh, He determined where they were going to be. They get a cut of the profit. They're getting a cut of money from just uh, the land that they're leasing to these companies. So it's really a one-sided deal. Um, so to that question, they don't own it, but they, in a way, virtually do own them. Uh, and then, of course, everything beyond that was now like fully Disney owned and operated. But for a time, the plan was that Marriott would be the company sort of in charge of all that stuff. So it's really interesting to see how that turned um, and how Michael Eisner, I think, you know, for all the hate he'll sometimes get for the direction he took Disney in, he was actually like a really crazy genius when it came to the, these business decisions. And that's sort of what took Disney from like the brink of um, being, you know, hostily taken over to being the, the giant mega corp that it is today. And it was always a really just an interesting way. A fun, another fun little anecdote about the Swan and Dolphin is that was sort of when Eisner learned his lesson about listening to Imagineers. Because up until that point, Imagineers followed this rule of thumb that uh, every guest should have a 360-degree view. And Eisner broke that rule by 
building the swan and dolphin and designing it the way it was because you can actually see it from France and Epcot and that sort of ruined the illusion and Eisner didn't really care for this rule about ruining the illusion and they pushed forward and they built it anyway and then when it was built he regretted it and he actually asked them you know what can you do to cover it up can you put something there and they were like you cannot put something tall enough there to cover this up it's this is how it is and so it was the mistake they sort of had to live with but uh, to Eisner's credit he learned from that mistake and he was very careful about that sort of stuff going into the future. So, uh, still great hotels, though. Never stayed at them myself, but very interesting designs. And they were designs that Tishman hated uh, for obvious um, economical reasons. But on top of that, they just didn't think it looked very good. But they didn't have a say. Great, great question. Uh, oh, and as for the college program, I've never really experienced it personally. Uh, it was something I had been asked to consider like i remember my parents wanted me to consider it but wanting to get into film it made no sense for me uh working at the theme parks but i kind of wish i did do it i hear great things it's not the sort of program where you um it's not the sort of program where you're gonna get how do i put this in the way that makes the most sense some internships (laughs) i'm having such a hard time wording this Uh, What you get out of a Disney college experience is you get to put Disney on your resume, which is an incredibly impressive thing. You know, Disney is the kind of company that teaches other companies how to run themselves because they do it so well. So to have that on your resume that you worked at Disney is, is a great thing. Um, And it's a great experience and you get to meet great people. You're not going to get paid at all. I mean, you will get paid technically, but between the the money they take for housing and the rate of pay to begin with, it's you're virtually not going to get you're not going to walk away with a lot of money for that. But what you do walk away with is a great experience, a great thing to put on your resume. I think it's totally worth it. Uh, And they do classes. So, I mean, if it's sort of within the field. Uh, you want to work in it's especially great I know people who have wanted to work in hospitality you know hotels and things like that so obviously it was a no-brainer for them to to go and do the college program we've got our Q&A crew of one let's walk oh two of two perfect the word's spreading uh next question comes from Josh Zilka who asks according to Orlando Attraction Magazine there's a brochure being passed around without the hat in the middle of Hollywood Studios So, this isn't the first post I'm seeing about this. There's this rumor that there are these new maps and they doesn't have the hat, and so this is somehow indicative that the hat will be going away soon. Now, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I think it's really weird. I don't think, I think it'd be a weird intentional move on Disney's part if that is the case. Like, the bigger, the bigger job they'd have on their hand is actually removing the hat you think that the map update would be an afterthought or be the final step but apparently not um at the same time like i've you know within the past year i went from working at a very small company to a very large company not like disney large but large enough and i realized just how many cogs need to turn whenever there's a plan to be put in place and so you know immediately my thought at this is you know what maybe they were planning on taking the hat down and then they sort of pushed it back because of star wars you know attractions they want to build and avatar land and all this stuff but you know by the time that filtered down to the map team you know it was too late and so maybe like a couple of batches of maps will not have the hat i mean who knows maybe they're gonna take it down and it's gonna disappear one day and they're gonna announce that they're gonna put something else up it's it's hard to tell i wouldn't even venture a guess because that's such a weird and random clue and rumor no less that uh you can't make a responsible you know can't make a responsible estimation out of that i will say if the hat goes away i will not shed a tear it looked okay, but it's, you know, I've spoken about the hat. So, well, you know, I, it won't be missed by me if it does go. Uh, next question comes from Kelso. Kelso asks, what property, uh, Marvel, Star Wars, etc., do you want Disney to buy next? Ooh, this is an interesting question. So Disney owns Marvel now. Disney owns Star Wars. They own Indiana Jones. What next? I mean, there's a part of me that says nothing. I don't want them to buy anything next. They have a bunch to work with. Let them work with it. Let them get better at it. And there's something to be said about some creative, um, dynamic creative landscape, you know, of of having different owners for different things. You don't want Disney to own too much. I know we all love Disney and we're fans of Disney, but having a monopoly on creative IP is never going to be a good thing because then they lose incentive to stay competitive. 
So, I mean, that's the realistic answer, but let's have fun with it. What if I could get Disney to buy up any franchise next that they could Disneyfy? What would it be? That's a tough one. Um, I some people would say like DC, like it shouldn't be comics, shouldn't be sci-fi. Like they've already got something great from those, right? So maybe it could be something else. What could it be? I mean, if you get in the video game space, I think if they bought, ooh, if they bought a developer like Bioware, you know, and really let Bioware loose with doing, see, but the thing is Bioware, they're not an IP, they're a company, right? So maybe that's not that the, the right answer. What if they bought, you know, Mass Effect, no, Mass Effect, they wouldn't, I don't think they'd touch. I think it's a little, I don't think it's family friendly enough. I don't know. That's really tough. I would have been almost a little cool if they bought with Minecraft, but it would have been interesting. Well, I, yeah, well, that might be a whole topic for another video if they bought Minecraft. Uh, I think it would have been certainly interesting if they bought Minecraft. I don't know. Maybe at a video game space, at a movie space. Gosh, you stumped me. You stumped me this week. So this is my question for you all this week. If, if In a hypothetical where it's okay if, for Disney to buy everything, what property would you want them to buy next? It has to be like not a company per se, but a property. So, you know, not Naughty Dog, but Uncharted, that sort of thing. Um, maybe Uncharted. That'd be pretty sweet. Make this an Uncharted ride. Boom, done. Oh my gosh. There we go. <gasps> is there a Yeti up there? It looks like the Yeti is up there. Um, next question comes from... I'm going to try and revisit that one. You really stumped me. Next question comes from Adam Shaver, who asks, uh, What do you think is the best-looking roller coaster at Disney? Quick answer there, Space Mountain. It's an iconic exterior. It's beautiful. You can't tell it's a roller coaster. It's got the mystery of the interior coaster. It was one of the first interior coasters. I think it's beautiful. Uh, and then lastly this week... Sean Boo asks, what do you think of the idea of Disney Springs having theaters on it and some Disney mu musicals being there, like being put there? Uh, I don't know if you're like commenting on a rumor or they've confirmed this or you're just throwing a what if out there. I think that's a cool idea. I think, you know, Disney has done a great job with uh, musicals on Broadway and why not, you know, give people who visit Disney the opportunity to see that sort of thing and expand there. I don't know how feasible it is from a business perspective. Um, because I don't know the intricacies of, of theater, to be honest, so I don't even know how much, it, like, a play costs to run. But I think as a hypothetical idea, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, Jurassic Park. Oh my gosh, Disney owning Jurassic Park. Maybe, maybe if Disney bought Jurassic Park, that would be really sweet. Work it into the Animal Kingdom? Yes, that is my answer, Jurassic Park. Anyway, thank you all for answer, uh, asking questions this week. Uh, if you have a question you want me to answer, uh, you can go ahead and leave it in the comments below, or you could tweet it at me. I'm at Rob Plays on Twitter. You could ask on Facebook. I'm on uh, Rob Plays That Game on Facebook. If you like the video and you want to see more of it, all you have to do is hit that subscribe button. I try to get to a couple of Q&As every single week. Um, the next few, you might see me answering older questions because I'm going to be out of town, but uh, you will still have your Q&A fix. So anyway, thank you Q&A crew for following along. Everybody have a great week. Whatever you're doing, make the most of it, and I hope to see you next time for the next Minecraft Disney Q&A.